I heard an old story. Thank you for tuning in to the television ministry of Clay's Mill Baptist Church. Join us as we share our passion for soul winning, spiritual growth, and revival in our state and nation. And now, Pastor Jeff Fugit. Well, good evening and welcome to the program tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you watching. If you will, take time to text or call a friend and let them know Brother Fugit and his family are on television and uh, you'll enjoy the program. If you're watching by way of Facebook, if you'll share the program, that would be a great blessing. And one of the things I always enjoy is to know where you're watching from. Tell us the name of the town and the state where you're watching from. If you have a prayer request of any kind, if you'll post that on there, I'll join the many others in praying for you. If you do not have a church to attend, I would invite you to attend church with us right here at the Clays Mill Baptist Church. We are located at 1220 Brannan Road, and we are between Nicholasville Road and Harrodsburg Road. If you're on Man of War and uh, you're between uh, Nicholasville Road and Harrodsburg Road, uh, you have uh, Clay's Mill and Clay's Mill Extended dead ends on Brannan Road. We're only a thousand feet from the dead end of Clay's Mill Extended there when it comes on to Brandon Road, and we're on the Nicholasville side of that. Church starts at 1030 in the morning. Sunday school classes begin at 930, and I sure am thankful that we are back as far as church is concerned Sunday evening at 6 o'clock, and our bus ministry is up and going again. Uh, a little over 20 of our bus routes ran this past week, and over 400 children I rode the buses to Sunday school and church last week, and it was a joy uh, to see them going, and I appreciate so much uh, the faithful work of our bus drivers, of our bus captains, and then the folks that financially support the great bus ministry. There were 35 visitors on the buses this past Sunday, and 14 children received Christ as their personal Savior. One of the things that's important for a coming generation is to win children to Christ. Teach them about God, teach, uh, teach them about Jesus, and teach them the Word of God. And that's what the bus ministry does. Let me tell you about a special day we're having here at our church. And I'd love to invite folks from all over the region to come and take part in the special day. Now, on that Sunday, November 1st, we're going to have church outside. It will be a drive-in service. And the reason being is we just won't have room inside the building for the big day that we're planning on that Sunday. We'd love for you to come. There are hundreds of parking spaces out there. And there'll be a big platform set up, and I'll be preaching from that platform. And the purpose of the Sunday, November 1st, is for God's people to come together and pray for America and pray for the election that will be that following Tuesday. Of course, early voting has already started, but voting will be through that day, November 3rd, and will end on that day. We're praying uh, that God will continue our space of grace in America. And we're praying that religious liberty will continue. And I have some major concerns about what's going on in some of the states of our nation. And so this day is a very important day. I invite you to come, plan now, put it on your calendar, no, calendar November 1st, to be at Clay's Mill Baptist Church, 1220 Brannan Road. Now, if we have nice weather on that day, we're going to have chairs set up out here, and you'll be able to sit in front of the platform. If the weather is not good, let's say it's too cold, uh, we'll still have the service outside, but you'll be able to stay in your car. You'll be able to hear me. Uh, we'll have, and we have it set up now. You can turn your radio dial to 89.5. Now, you can't hear it anywhere but in our parking lot, and you'll be able to hear just as if you were sitting in the auditorium. I want cars to come and fill the parking lot up. I want everybody to come and be a part of that day as we pray for America, November the 1st at 1030. Hope that you'll plan to come. We have special days planned throughout the month of November. November 8th, we're recognizing all of our veterans. November 15th, we're honoring all of our first responders. November the 22nd is the 56th anniversary of our church here at Clay's Mill. And on Sunday night, we're going to have a special 
gospel sing for two hours. I'll be preaching during that time, but we'll have lots of singing. And if you enjoy good old-fashioned hymn singing and gospel singing, you'll enjoy Sunday night, uh, November the 22nd. I appreciate you watching the program tonight on television or if you're watching by way of Facebook. And I trust that this program is a blessing to you. One other announcement, and then we're going to get to a song. My new book, Acquainted with Grief, is now available. My new book, Acquainted with Grief, is now available. The cost of the book is $8. I've been selling it for $6. I'll mail it to you for $8 if you'd like to have a copy of that book. If I, if I could, I'd give a million uh, copies away. If you're dealing with grief in your life, maybe the loss of a loved one, uh, maybe a broken marriage or a hurt in your life, I take the Word of God and the 35 years experience as a pastor and I help guide you through the grieving process. If you'd like to have a copy of that book, you can order it by sending me a message on Facebook or you can send me an email. I'll send the book to you and I'll bill you for it. You can pay for it. My email address is pastorfugit at msn.com. For some reason, you send me a message and I don't respond within 72 hours. Please send the message again. Sometimes emails and messages go to junk files and I miss them. And I'd like for you to be able to order that book and I'll get it out to you as soon as I get that request from you. And so you can send me an email, pastorfugit at msn.com, order it that way. Or you can send me a message on Facebook and I'll get you a copy of that book entitled Acquainted with grief. Here's my boys to sing a special and then I'll give you the message this evening. Once I was clothed in the rags of my sin, wretched and poor, lost and lonely within, but with wondrous compassion, the King of all kings, in pity and love, He took me under His wings, oh yes, oh yes, I'm a child of the King, His royal blood now flows in my veins and I who was wretched and poor now can sing praise God praise God I'm a child of the King now I'm a child with a heavenly home my Holy Father has made me His own And I'm cleansed by His blood And I'm clothed in His love And someday I'll sing with the angels above Oh yes, oh yes, I'm a child the King, His royal blood now flows in my veins, and I, who was wretched and poor, now can sing, praise God, praise God, I'm a child of the I'm preaching tonight from the book of 2 Corinthians. One of the most encouraging truths that I have found in the Word of God is right here in this passage of Scripture. I believe it is a truth that will guarantee the joy and happiness of any Christian no matter your situation or circumstances of life. And the message is this. God's grace is given to me, not just for me, but to flow through me. 
If you listen to the message tonight for these next 17 minutes, I promise you that this truth will help you to find joy in life. The Apostle Paul writes to the church at Corinth and he tells them in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, he says, Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. And may I say tonight, God is the only one that can give comfort deep within where we need it. If you're having a, 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 a hard time in life, you're bearing a burden, or your heart is broken tonight, don't try to numb or mask that hurt with something that the devil would offer. Seek the God of all comfort. God wants to comfort you, and he will comfort you if you'll call on his name. Now, he goes on to say, "...who comforteth us in all our tribulation." But he doesn't stop there. Paul tells the church at Corinth that God comforts us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Then he says, For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation." Let me summarize what he says here with five statements. Number one, trials are a part of our life. Since sin came to the Garden of Eden, man has known hurt and pain and suffering. Trials are a part of our life. Trials are typically from one of two sources. Trials are, first of all, from decisions that we make and the behavior that we have. Sometimes we bring trials and difficulties in our own life. We make a bad decision. We do wrong in life. Our behavior is sinful, and we suffer for that. In Psalm 51, David is pouring out his heart in repentance to God because of a sin that he had committed in his life and a sin that he had tried to cover up. David never got better until he went to God and said, Oh God, forgive me. And he said, to wash me thoroughly, he said, cleanse me. And David poured out his heart to God, and God comforted him. That trial was a result of his own doings. Second of all, trials come as a result of God working in our life. Paul refers to those here as the sufferings of Christ. You say, preacher, what do you mean, the sufferings of Christ? Well, when Paul went into towns to preach, Paul was not well received in many places that he went. I've often said when Paul went into town, he didn't go to see, uh, check on the best western. Uh, Paul wanted to know uh, about the jail and the jailer because he spent more time in the jails than he did uh, in a nice motel or a nice place to stay. And Paul suffered to get the gospel out. Paul suffered. And uh, many examples of that. And as you look through the Bible, you find many people suffering for the cause of Christ. Now, you say, preacher, that sounds terrible. Uh, Why would anybody suffer? Well, uh, dear friend, it's because of the price of sin. It's because of the curse of sin. And Christ had to come and suffer in our place. We suffer with Christ all, but listen... When we suffer with Christ, we share in the glory with Christ as well. Now I want to move on for the sake of this message. So trials are a part of our life. They either come from our own doings or they come from sufferings of Christ. Number two, we are helped by the grace of God. The Bible says that he is the God of all comfort. The Bible says in verse number four, who comforteth us in all our tribulation. He repeats that statement throughout these verses and he says that our God is the God of all comfort. I thank God tonight for God's grace. 
Whatever my need is, God's grace is sufficient. If I need wisdom, wisdom is available. If I need strength, strength is available. If I need comfort, Comfort is available. If I need whatever it is in my life, He is the God of all comfort. I'm thankful for the grace of God. God's grace allows me to continue in the work, even through difficulty. I love the song that says in that third verse of amazing grace, through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. I love the grace of God. Number three, we help others with the same grace that God helps us with. Now, what's Paul saying here? Paul's saying, when I went through a trial and difficulty in my life, God gave me grace. God gave me strength. God gave me comfort. Then, in my ministry to others, when they were going through the same trials that I had gone through that God had comforted me with, I say to them, hey, God's grace is available. God's strength is available. God's wisdom is available. Call on Him. I want you to know the same help that I got from God is available to you. And so we learn in this passage of Scripture that God's graces are given to us not just to come to us and help us, but also to flow through us to help somebody else. I just gave the key to joy in life. Can I tell you, dear friend, when we turn inward and we live our life for everything to be ours, for everything to come our way, we're going to lose joy. We're going to lose the peace of God. We're going to lose the happiness that comes from serving God because, dear friend, the grace of God is not given to us just to help us and just to keep. We don't go to church just to be helped. We come to church to be helped so we can in turn help somebody else. And so I said trials are a part of our life. We're helped by the grace of God in our trials. Number three, we help others with the same grace that going through the same problems that we have gone through. Now the fourth thing, we are helped again every time we help others with the grace God gave us. Think about that. We are helped again when we help others with the same grace that God gave to us in our trials. Have you ever, uh, and, 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 and you, you know, you'll know what I'm talking about, eating at a restaurant and you thought, wow, this is good. I've never been here before. This is really good. And uh, so you say to a friend at church, Bo, we ate at a new restaurant the other day and let me tell you something, it was good. And maybe you had fried chicken or maybe you had a meatloaf or maybe you had uh, their specialty or maybe you had their dessert. Uh, you had their banana pudding. Uh, maybe you went down to Michael's over in Irvin and uh, boy, you just came back and said, man, this place is good. And you see, you got help. And then uh, you told somebody else about it. And, uh, and uh, it, it helps you when you help somebody else. Now, can I tell you something? Uh, more exciting than food, more exciting than a, a clearance deal uh, somewhere, more exciting than a sale is to find the grace of God and say, as God's grace has helped me, God's grace will help you. And when I help somebody else with that grace, I get helped again. Isn't it a blessing that you take someone to your favorite restaurant, to your favorite store, uh, to see your favorite place. I was preaching out in Seattle, Washington this past week, and uh, a man that picked me up at the airport, he grew up there uh, in that area. And on Tuesday when he took me to lunch, he said, I I I'd like to take 15 minutes to drive out to a restaurant in a town where I grew up uh, here in the Seattle-Tacoma area. And he told me, he said, uh, a little history about that town. And, and it was, it was beautiful. The colors of the trees were beautiful. And he said, I'm going to take you to a restaurant. He said, just a, just a little mom-pop restaurant. And he said, you'll love the fried chicken. Now, he had been eating the fried chicken there. And can I tell you, not only did he enjoy it again, when I ate it, I said, brother, I want to tell you what, this is almost as good as grandma's chicken right here. He got a big smile on his face. You know why? Because he'd help me find a good place to eat. When I help others find the joy of the Lord, when I help others find the grace of God, when I help others find the strength of God, not only are they helped, but I get helped again by 
helping them. And so I preach tonight, all of God's grace is not given to us to keep. All of God's grace is given to us to help us and flow through us and to help somebody else. I want to take my Bible and if you would join me, uh, go to Matthew chapter 5 and notice three verses in Matthew chapter 5 where the Bible talks about us giving the gospel or us letting our light shine uh, to others, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 14, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now, you and I know that we are not a light in and of ourselves. We're a light because we've received the light of Christ. Because Christ has given to us salvation, we've been born again. We in turn let our light shine, the light of Christ within us, to someone else in darkness, and we help them to find the light of Christ. We do that in personal soul winning. We do that in personal witnessing. We do that in preaching. We do that in planting churches. We do that through all of the ministries of our churches. We do that. We let our light shine. Now, what are we doing? We're saying, oh, I found the light. I was in darkness, and I found the light of Christ. I found uh, uh, salvation by grace through faith in Christ. Uh, I've received the wonderful gift gift of eternal life. Now I want to share that with you. Oh, how many times have I had the privilege to sit down on a couch, to sit down in someone's living room or to stand beside someone on the front porch in so many different places and, and give them the gospel and to see them bow their head and receive Christ into their life and to say, oh, what a joy it is to be saved. And you see, when I got saved, that was the greatest day in my life. But every time I win somebody to Christ, that joy of salvation, it bubbles in my life again. Oh my goodness, the joy that we have. Salvation didn't come to me so I could put it under a bushel and keep it to myself. Salvation came to me that I could let my light shine to the whole world and the whole world could see Christ in us. We could tell of the light of the gospel of Christ and others. Not only do they receive salvation, but you and I receive another blessing every time we win folks to Christ. On Sunday nights, typically, I will give a little report about our day that day, and sometimes I'll talk about the bus ministry. Sometimes I'll talk about uh, the Spanish church or uh, another ministry in our church or a church we have planted. And, uh, for example, last Sunday uh, was a Gospelite Baptist Church in Ashland, Kentucky. Pastor Jason Porter has been there 18 years this past Sunday. What an amazing thing. Sometimes I'll, I'll share those testimonies, and I'll I'll say, and you know what? They've had this many saved, or we had this many saved. And every time I say that, our church will just shout and say, Amen, preacher, amen. Now, now, you know what? Not only did we have the privilege of being saved, not only did we have the privilege of becoming a part of a church, we had the privilege of help giving birth to another church. We had the privilege of helping to train another pastor. And every time they bear fruit, we rejoice and all the joy of the Christian life is not just receiving, it's giving. And I've learned this about God. The more I give of what I receive, the more He gives me that I can give to others. The more of God's blessings that I share with others, the more God blesses us. And I believe there are many Christians tonight, they're like the Dead Sea. They've received so many good things of the Lord, but they never give a gospel tract. They never give a testimony of the the goodness of God in their life. They never witness to someone else and all of the blessings are stored up and they become like the Dead Sea. They have no value and they give no life. Let me say to you tonight, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. As the a psalmist said, let others know of God working in your life. You know, James talked about Christians who learn to pray, 
but they only used prayer to pray for what they wanted in their own life. He said, as a result, you've got war going on inside. You lust and you desire to have, he said. But, but, but you don't receive because you ask to consume it on your own lust. And he said, prayer is not for us just to get what we need, but prayer is for us to receive what others may need. God's answered prayers for us at our church this past week. Oh my, what a wonderful joy it was to announce in our church and other announcements I'll make tomorrow of what God is doing even in this a challenging year where we've dealt with this pandemic and all of this, but we've seen churches started. We've seen the blessings of the Lord. We've seen God bless and multiply <coughs> Excuse me, even in a difficult time. And oh, I tell you, you know why? Because our folks, they're not just receiving from church. They're giving. They're investing. We're planting churches. I was in, as I mentioned already, in Seattle, Washington, preaching. And on Tuesday night in the service, they gave testimonies uh, before I preached. And uh, one fellow stood up and said, I just got back uh, from Alaska where I went and helped a group uh, start a church. And I've been there the last, I believe he said, four weeks in helping to get that church going and getting the building ready and uh, inviting people and winning folks to Christ. He was so excited he didn't get saved. He'd been saved 20 years. But he helped others to get saved. He helped another church to get started. Hence, we find the joy and the gladness, the happiness and satisfaction of the Christian life. Why don't you find somebody you can be a help to this week? Why don't you think right now, maybe make a list of people that you could pray for this coming week. I wonder if there's a group of folks that you could write a letter to we got folks in our church, they do so well at this. I, I, I mean, and, and they're happy people. They're always sending a card or sending a note or sending a gift or sending flowers. Just saying, I want you to know I'm praying for you. Hey, folks, there are people hurting all around us. There's opportunity for us to take of the blessings of God and share that with other people. Maybe there's somebody you can pray for this week. Maybe there's a group of folks you can send a letter to this week. What about making a list of folks that need to be saved and you can start praying for them and say, Lord, I'm going to go witness to them. I pray that you'd prepare their heart to receive the gospel of the Lord Jesus. Friend, the joy of the Christian life is not just the blessings that we receive, but it's the blessings that we share with others. Here's what he said, and I'll close. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Thanks for watching tonight. Here's Jeremy to play a good instrumental as we go off the air tonight. <laughs>